Language involves reading, understanding, speaking, and writing words. There are two brain areas that are important in language. Wernicke or Wernicke's area helps us to interpret what we read or what we hear and in being able to produce speech that's understandable and not just gibberish. The motor speech area is Broca's area and that regulates the precise motor activity required for us to produce speech. So the primary motor cortex signals motor neurons to activate the production of speech. So both Wernicke or Wernicke uh, and Broca's areas are in the left hemisphere in most people. That is where we analyze the literal meaning of speech. And that is in the left hemisphere, which is the categorical hemisphere. The representational hemisphere, which is the right hemisphere, um, the uh, area that is opposite of Wernicke's area that's located. Now remember, Wernicke's is in the left, but in the right hemisphere, we have an area that recognizes the emotional content of speech. So if we have damage to that area of the cerebrum, it can make a person unable to understand emotional nuances, such as you're happy or you're sad in your spoken word. A lesion in the cortical region of the representational hemisphere, the right side, uh, is where the um, aprodasia may occur which causes a dull, emotionless speech. Aprasia of speech is a motor disorder where you know exactly what you want to say, but you can't say it. So that's sort of what we call word salad. So I may want to tell you that my dog's name is Cooper, but instead I say Cooper, yellow, tree, hurt my. That didn't make sense. That's word salad. I have the ability to form the words. I just can't make them make sense. Aphasia is when you have a difficulty understanding or producing speech. So you may not be able to produce comprehensible speech at all and not even realize it. Uh, this can very often be due to an injury to the head or a stroke. Dyslexia is an inherited learning disability where you have problems with single word decoding. So people that have this usually have trouble reading, but also have problems writing and spelling accurately. So they may be able to recognize the letters normally, but they demonstrate a level of reading competence that's way below their level of intelligent, intelligence. Excuse me. Uh, so their writing may be disorganized and uneven, the letters in the incorrect order, or you write B instead of D to spell dog. Uh, some people can improve their reading ability as they get older, uh, but the improvement may reflect that the nervous system is just maturing uh, and retaining things in the brain better and able to recognize words and symbols. But there may be also a form of disconnect syndrome where you have impaired transfer of information through that corpus callosum that connects the right and left hemispheres of the brain. And we'll end this chapter with a brief look at cranial nerves, which are part of the peripheral nervous system. They originate from the brain. There are 12 pair of cranial nerves, and they're designated with Roman numerals according to their position of originating on the brain. So beginning with the most anterior nerve, which is cranial nerve number one, it sticks out at the very anterior aspect of the brain, and that is your olfactory nerve that is responsible for your sense of smell. So it is sensory only, it brings in information to the brain. It does not have a motor function. Cranial nerve number two is your optic nerve. It is also just sensory. It brings visual information to the brain. So you can go through all of these 12. Now I'm not going to cover them all with you, but what you should notice is that they are either sensory, motor, or 
both. Okay, some of them will also have a little bit of autonomic nervous system function as well. And our last slide here just gives you another way of looking at those cranial nerves. So here's the brain. Here's the anterior aspect. So there's number one, olfactory. It is only sensory. And where, does the, where do the sensory neurons come from? The nose, because that's our sense of smell. So I want to call your attention to the little legend up here. Red illustrates sensory fibers that are coming into the brain. Motor fibers are blue, and that takes information out from the brain to cause an action. So this will take you through all 12 cranial nerves with whether they are motor or sensory. Now look, we've got some that are both. There's motor and sensory. You can tell by the colors and also the uh, explanation that you have or description that you have here. Now you will see these in your lab, but please do be familiar with them because this can also be a part of your lecture course and therefore on your lecture exam.